Today's episode is an update on the Stephen McCullough case. Now, Stephen McCullough is the YouTuber who is alleged to have created an alibi by live streaming a pre-recorded stream in order to murder his girlfriend, Natalie McNally. So Stephen McCullough has applied for bail and he has recently been in court and it was denied. A lot of evidence or a lot of new evidence came up in court and we're going to go over that today. So I'm just pulling up the article from the BBC. Natalie McNally accused Stephen McCullough refused bail. So this is Natalie McNally and it is confirmed that she was 15 weeks pregnant with Stephen's baby when she was murdered. A man accused of the murder of Natalie McNally in her home in Lurgan, County Armagh, has been refused bail. Stephen McCullough of Woodland Gardens in Lisbon, County Antrim, appeared by video link at the High Court in Belfast. The 33-year-old denies murdering his then-girlfriend, who was expecting his child. Miss McNally, who was 32, was 15 weeks pregnant when she was stabbed at her home in Silverwood Green in December 2022. Barrister for the prosecution, Natalie Pinkerton, opposed bail on three fronts. A perceived risk of re-offending, a flight risk, and the potential for interfering with an ongoing investigation. Miss Pinkerton told the court that Miss McNally and Mr McCullough had begun a relationship in August of 2022, and she had subsequently become pregnant with his child. Now, when we looked at this previously, there was mention of him being her partner at the beginning of the investigation after her death, and then he quickly was removed from the papers as, as any link to her. And I wonder if that was just sensitivity towards the family. It is now confirmed that they were in a relationship from August 2022 and the child she was carrying was his, which makes this even worse. The court heard that on the evening of her murder, Miss McNally had been watching football at her parents' home, but later drove to her own home at Silverwood Green. CCTV in the area showed she arrived home at around 7pm. Neighbours heard a scream. Court heard that as far as Miss McNally was aware, Mr McCullough, who had a large online following, was engaged in a live stream of the computer game Grand Theft Auto, which began at 6pm. Text messages between the two highlighted this, with Mr McCullough sending a message at 5.57pm stating, Right, I'm away to stream the night away, wish me luck. The court heard that Miss McNally replied two minutes later. However, the court heard that it had subsequently been established that this broadcast was not live, but rather pre-recorded. So this was December 18th of her, she was murdered, is when he was live streaming this pre-recorded stream. This pre-recorded live stream he actually filmed on the 13th of December, running into the 14th of December. Mr McCullough's defence barrister, Craig Payton, said his client acknowledged in his statement that the footage was pre-recorded, but that he had been drinking and watched it go out live online. Prosecution barrister told the court that at 7.09, a man was filmed on CCTV two miles from Mr McCullough's Lisbon address, walking towards a bus stop in Dunmurray. The man who was wearing a hood, snood, or scarf and gloves and carrying a shopping bag, then travelled to Lurgan by bus. Now this man on the bus is the same man who was wearing marigolds underneath the black winter glove. And what was found at the scene? A marigold or an imprint of a marigold glove. The prosecution argued that the man's height and build are consistent with those of Mr McCullough. It was also stated that in one section of CCTV gathered on the bus, a portion of the man's eyes and nose area are visible, which they argued are consistent with Mr McCullough. In response, Mr Payton said, We have heard a lot about the suspect on the bus, but we have heard very little about he is purported to be that person. Now, this, this is ridiculous. There's so much even in the press about how this man is linked to being Stephen McCullough. The timings, the CCTV, where he got on, where he got off, where he was then seen walking back, and even up to getting in the taxi outside the pub, which is then driven to outside Stephen's front door. It was alleged the man on the bus got off in Lurgan with CCTV showing him walking towards Silverwood Green. He initially walks past Silverwood Green, the prosecution barrister said, this would allow him to walk past Natalie's house and to see if the car was there and the lights on. The court heard that the man came back a few moments later at 8.52pm. It then heard that at 9pm, neighbours heard a woman scream. The man was then seen leaving the area at 9.31, having changed his clothes, walked to Carnegie Street and Lurgan and got into a taxi. Now, why are they saying that this man has changed his clothes? Could it not just be a different man? 
And it turns out that in the CCTV footage, the man has the same gait, the same stride, the same walking pattern as each other. So that's how they know this man is the same person and has changed clothes. The court heard that the driver later positively identified Mr. McCullough in a Viper video, which is a video identification parade electronic recording. Although Mr. McCullough's barrister stressed that this identification came after his client's image had appeared in the media relating to the case. I looked back on articles on this and there wasn't many photos of Stephen. Yes, there were some, but it wasn't anything that currently looks like him. They were a lot, the photos were a lot older than current ones. It's not to say that it might not have been on the news in Northern Ireland. It certainly wasn't on the news over here in the north of England. So it's it's hard to know where this if or even if this taxi driver could have seen Stephen's photo elsewhere. The court then heard the taxi travel to Mr. McCullough's Lisbon home where the man got out, went into the grounds of the house before coming back out to pay the driver and collect bags from the vehicle, which were then thrown over a hedge, which is odd. The court heard then three minutes later at 11.16 p.m. Mr. McCullough's mobile phone was activated for the first time since 5.57 p.m. So we have Stephen being dropped off at 11.13 p.m. by the taxi driver and at 11.16 p.m. his phone is then active again. Now during his live stream he mentions throughout the video that he can't go get his phone because it's in the other room and if he does get his phone it'll the wi-fi will knock him off the the live stream off because he's running on an old device he also mentions that if he goes gets his phone he'll just end up looking at tiktok because he's addicted he's making all these excuses as to why he can't get his phone during this live stream and then on the day that he puts out this live stream he doesn't use his phone between the hours of the live stream it's it's bonkers but it doesn't help him much does it the evidence is stacking up the court heard that at 17 minutes past midnight the following morning cctv footage showed mr mccullough standing at the front of the premises putting bins out he was not wearing the same clothes as the man who arrived at the house well if you've committed a crime and you've come back from that crime even if you have changed after committing that crime in that residence, you'd get changed. Um, I think you'd be super paranoid and you'd want rid of everything that you've had on since then. You wouldn't want evidence in your house of any sort, even if you don't believe it to be contaminated by anything, you'd still be super conscious that that clothes was worn in that residence. I could have had something on my hands, something on my feet. I could have contaminated it with evidence. I better get rid. Yeah, you'd change. So that's not surprising. He was not wearing the same clothes as the man who arrived at the house. The prosecution alleged that Mr. McCullough purchased, changed and disposed of the clothes. Yeah, fair. Same as what I'd argue. The following day, Mr. McCullough traveled to Miss McNally's home, found her body and called the emergency services. It was established that she'd suffered compression to the neck, stab wounds to the neck and head injuries from a blunt instrument. A knife was recovered at the scene, but the blunt instrument has not been located. Now, according to reports that I've had read that it's information that has been leaked, so it's not confirmed, the knife was hidden very well at the residence. And you would expect somebody to know the house to be able to hide a weapon well and I believe the knife wasn't found until four days after the search had started which is interesting where on earth was it it would have been obviously contaminated where on earth was this weapon the blunt instrument has not been located it doesn't give us any information on what this blunt instrument is is that something important to the public to know well it could be because if shall we say Stephen McCullough is innocent. There is somebody out there wielding a blunt instrument. If it hasn't been located, we can assume that it's not something at the property, like let's say a toaster or a vase, something like that, just a, an inanimate object nearby. So this weapon could be still in someone's possession. 
Mr. McCullough was then arrested but subsequently released due to his alibi that he was live streaming at the time of Miss McNally's death. He was discounted as a suspect on the 24th of December before being reconsidered. The prosecution said that Miss McNally had been in contact with a previous partner and that they believed Mr. McCullough had read messages between the two on Miss McNally's phone on the night of the 17th of December. This article goes on to explain how he didn't have a criminal record, but in the previous episode where we covered this case, we, we know that there is a, an ex-girlfriend who was assaulted by him, but she withdrew her claims so they weren't able to prosecute. So although there's no criminal record, we can still assume that he is a dangerous individual. This information here though, the prosecution said that Miss McNally had been in contact with a previous partner and that they believed Miss McCullough had read messages between the two on Miss McNally's phone on the night of the 17th of December. Now, the police believe that is the reason, the motive for him flipping and murdering his girlfriend and her, her well, their unborn child. However, we know that he pre recorded same as premeditated to do this live stream on the 13th and 14th of December. This would have been before the police say that he has seen these messages on the phone. So whatever the police believe this links it to a motive, this stream, this pre-recorded stream is littered with Easter eggs of clues as to what might happen to Natalie or what was on his mind. And why else would you pre-record a live stream? He didn't use his phone on purpose. He pre-recorded a live stream on purpose. This is all premeditated actions. This was planned way before the 17th of December. This motive that the police are trying to put together that he saw the messages on the 17th of December, something happened before that. It could just be that Stephen McCullough is a sick individual. We have a lot of them all around the world committing crimes and there's no explanation as to why they do it. But a motive helps. I would look into the phone history further, conversations, was he stalking her while she was out and they weren't supposed to be together. It's all behaviour that could lead to him building up in his mind that she deserved to get what she got. So his bail was denied. On March 24th, he is due back in court. I can't say what's on the docket for that. And we will hope, because the evidence is stacked against him, and although he's innocent until proven guilty, it's not looking good. I just hope he gives the family an easy time and no trial, and he just pleads. So if you want to be updated on this case, I will be going over the court case if it happens and all future updates if you could click the like button and subscribe and I will see you again next time.